Welcome back fellow thrill seekers to another horror video here at Somba Studios. Today, we will explore the famous tale that blends science and fiction, the electrifying origins of Mary Shelley's iconic novel, Frankenstein. It's alive, it's moving, it's alive, oh, it's alive, it's alive, it's alive, it's alive. Being the first notable female horror author, Mary Shelley went on to shape Gothic literature as we know it and forever leave a mark on the horror genre. Although Shelley's novel was an original, did you know Frankenstein was actually real? On January 17, 1803, in a London prison called Newgate, a young man named George Forster faced his end at the gallows for committing murder. After his execution, as was the custom of the time, his lifeless body was taken through the city for public dissection of the Royal College of Surgeons. Yet, what unfolded next was far from ordinary. Forster was about to become part of a groundbreaking experiment involving electricity. Leading these electrifying experiments was none other than Giovanni Albini, an Italian natural philosopher and the nephew of Luigi Galvani, with George Forster's lifeless body before him, Aldini, alongside his assistants, embarked on their electrifying journey, as reported in the Times newspaper. When electricity was first applied to the deceased's face, the criminal's jaw started shaking, nearby muscles twisted strangely, and one eye even opened unexpectedly. As the experiment continued, the right hand rose and clenched, while the legs and thighs displayed signs of movement. To some observers, it seemed as if the unfortunate man stood on the brink of coming back to life. By the time Aldini conducted these experiments on Forster, the idea of a profound connection between electricity and the vital processes of life had been circulating for at least a century. As early as the early 1700s, Isaac Newton, had ventured into speculations along these lines. In 1730, an English astronomer and dyer named Stephen Gray showcased the concept of electrical conductivity, using an orphan boy suspended mid-air by silk cords and a positively charged tube, resulting in a display of electrical attraction involving the child's extremities and a nearby dish of gold leaf. In 1814, English surgeon John Abernethy delivered the Hunterian Lecture of the Royal College of Surgeons, asserting a similar claim that electricity represented, or at least resembled, the vital force. This assertion ignited a fierce debate with fellow surgeon William Lawrence, who contested the necessity of invoking a vital force to explain life's processes. Notably, both Mary and Percy Shelley were acquainted with this debate, as Lawrence was their personal physician. By the time Mary Shelley published Frankenstein in 1818, readers were accustomed to the notion that electricity held the potential to create or restore life. A few months after the novel's release, Scottish chemist Andrew Ewell conducted his own electrical experiments on the corpse of Matthew Clydesdale, a murderer executed for his crimes. Ewell recounted that when electricity coursed through Clydesdale's lifeless body, Every muscle in his countenance was simultaneously thrown into fearful action. Rage, horror, despair, anguish and ghastly smiles united their hideous expression in the murderer's face. The experiments were so gruesome that several spectators were compelled to leave with one gentleman even fainting. It is tantalizing to consider whether Yor had Mary Shelley's recent novel in mind as he conducted these chilling experiments. His accounts seemed deliberately crafted to highlight their most lurid aspects. While Frankenstein may appear as fantasy to modern eyes, it held no such allure for its author and the initial readers of the time. Just as our contemporary discussions of artificial intelligence evoke a range of responses and debates, so did the concept of electrical life and Shelley's novel in that era. The scientific backdrop of Frankenstein serves as a reminder that current debates have a rich historical context, and our contemporary discussions are shaped by that history. 
The 19th century marked the emergence of a novel perspective on the future, one intertwined with science and technology. Works like Frankenstein, in which authors fashioned their future from the elements of their present, played a pivotal role in shaping this new way of envisioning tomorrow. Reflecting on the scientific foundation that made Frankenstein seem so tangible in 1818 encourages us to carefully contemplate how we perceive the possibilities and perils of our current futures. Mary Shelley's novel was born from the electrifying ideas of her time, sparked by the shocking experiments with electricity and the mysteries of life that surrounded her. That brings us to the end of our video today here at Somber Studios. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more fascinating explorations of horror history. See you later in your nightmares. <laughs>